All right, here I am. Can you guys hear me okay? Just let me know. So, uh, hi everyone from the Netherlands and Norway, Karina, and Don from the driveway. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I made him leave with all the dogs. So... I would have some quiet to be able to do this live. So can you hear me okay? Just someone, one person, just let me know. Anyone? There's a lag. There's a big time lag on this. It should be. Yeah, it should be. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Don. So the next thing I'm going to do is literally join you guys. Hi, I'm here. Hi. <laughs> yeah, it took me a long time to get this part going, but here we are. Just me. So I thought this would make it uh, fun. You can literally digitize with me and I can be silly. Right? Right. All right. So... We've got sound, we've got me, we've got Hatch 2.0. So, sometimes, well, a couple of years ago, we used to do Saturday digitizing with Sue. And I kind of like that, but it just meant, um, it just meant that, I don't know, I guess every Saturday I had to do a live and I don't want to commit to that because uh, I, I just want to do them you know, not randomly, but every time we plan them, it goes crazy. Something will happen. The dogs will freak out, whatever. It drives me crazy. So what can we call this segment? I want it, I do want to make it regular. Uh, maybe something like um, weekend digitizing with Sue, maybe? What do you guys think? I need ideas, so we will uh, figure that out. Karina says, you send dog Don to the doghouse. Oh, uh, he's going to a dog park. So kind of the doghouse. I'm like, get out. Just get out. I need to do this. So it's, uh, yeah, it's okay. He doesn't mind. So we have 10 people watching. So you guys, uh, let me know where you're from. We got a few people who started off with that. I am a uh, Canadian, so I am from Canada. We live in Ontario in kind of a small town-ish, small-ish town uh, near Windsor, Ontario, which is across the river from Detroit. So that's where I am. And uh, Don and I run an embroidery business. I've been doing the business for... 15 years or so and we run it out of our house so we have a house that it's called um a four level back split or side split i think it's a side split so we have different levels so don has the basement basement i have the basement we have another living room upstairs and then the bedrooms so australia Ooh, hi sandy from australia that's awesome that's awesome. Massachusetts. Massachusetts. I wouldn't want to try to spell that. <laughs> Diane. Canada is easier to spell. That's Toronto. Oh, Helen. Hi. You're only about four hours away from me. Michigan. You're just across the river too. That's pretty close. I think Michigan's closer than Toronto. Oh, the Norsemen. Hello. Oh no, Don. <laughs> get the chance to do some fun stuff frisbee time we have weenies and weenie dogs don't do frisbee just so you know our rescue uh beagle bloodhound probably will uh but we're working on that south africa oh my melinda that's you're far far away far far away um uh, he, Don, will probably be on his phone walking the dogs, making a comment here and there. So we'll have to watch for him. We'll have to watch for him. So, okay, my name is Sue, and I am from OML Embroidery. 
And this is a new thing we're starting. I finally got set up. I have a lovely green screen. You can see it fade a little bit. I have a lovely green screen behind me. I have all my lighting set up. We spent a fortune so we could do, you know, better videos for you guys. So uh, we're going to start doing lives. I would also like to do uh, reading your comments and a vlog. So I don't know how you guys feel about that. You can let me know in the group or you can let me know in the comments um, what you guys think. Just kind of kick it up a little bit. There's still be digitizing and stitch alongs and all that kind of stuff. But I just thought, you know, just talking, a chatting. Uh, we could do a Q&A as well. So Susan Taylor. Hi, Seuss. Love your videos from Las Vegas. I've been there. So much fun in Las, Las Vegas. So much fun. I loved it. You eat until you throw up. <laughs> yeah, and we ran out of our American money really quickly, but uh, love the live. Yes. Thank you, Karina. Oh, Don. He's like, hey, buddy, to the Norseman. Hey, buddy. Don, Don, Don. So for this live, why don't we do more puzzle stuff? Y'all can't be tired of it completely, can you? Nah, let's do a puzzle stuff. Let's do, Karina and I have been uh, working on uh, puzzle mug rugs. And I did one and she did a couple of them and we came up with a solution so all the pieces will fit together. So let me explain that. You could make a puzzle piece mug rug, which is just one, or we were thinking we can make puzzle pieces that go together and then you can take them apart. So you could have it as like a centerpiece and then you could you know, take it apart to, for glasses or something like that. It's really a cute idea. Now for this, cause I'm doing this by myself, um, I don't have pop-ups. So whenever there's a pop-up on the screen, you guys won't be able to see it, unfortunately. And it's so I can see the comments. Otherwise, they'd be way off in that direction and it's hard to see and I won't notice them. I won't remember to look over there. So let me know if that bothers you guys too much. I don't know. So I am going to open a file and nope, you can't see it, which is fine because then you don't have to see my messy desktop, right? Yep, no, you still can't see it. Oh well, puzzle mug rug. Oh, but I have one to show Karina. Uh, okay, let's open it. Here we go. Hello. It's a bit slow. Hi from the UK. Well, hello. Hello from the UK. I used to live in the UK, which is awesome. For some reason that didn't open. Uh, my computer may be a little busy. I think I did this one, didn't I? Well, come on. She's jealous. What are you talking about, Dawn? You walk my wieners, please. And make sure the beagle guy is tired. I did it in E4. However, whatever. <laughs> Let's start again. Okay, so what we're going to do is bring in some artwork and we are going to start again. I actually, uh, I have a PES, but I do not want to work on the stitch file because we're going to be doing different things. So let's just whip this off quickly. This is the design here and let's do it quickly, okay? Because we can go over it. Now, if you have other um, embroidery software, you should be able to do this. Now, Embird and P Design 10, you create this motif in a different way. We're not necessarily creating a motif right now. We're going to create a shape, but it's just running stitches and it's copy and paste and uh, stuff like that. You lost me. I'm here. Did you lose me? I'm back again. Well, I wouldn't want to be lost. I can get lost. I don't want to get lost. All right, so let's go to digitize. And for now, we're going to do an open shape. And this 
uh, idea makes really good use of the tools in Hatch, for example. I'm more comfortable with Hatch. Um, I know where everything is. It's close enough to E4, and that's why I'm using it. I can, uh, I, I have, what do I have? I have Wilcom E4, I have Hatch, I have Embrilliance, I have P Design 10, and what am I missing? I'm missing one. So because I have so many different softwares, I get confused a little bit. Um, and it's hard to do that live because I'll be like, what? I can't remember how to do it. So that's why I always use Hatch or E4. So I want to copy this and let's see right about there. And it didn't merge it again, but that, that doesn't matter. That's fine. I'm going to zoom out a bit. Uh, let's change the color to maybe black so you guys can see it better. Oh, it looks very pretty. Very pretty. Everyone good? Stream quality is good. No worries. Yeah, I know. I know. It, it, it's not bad at all. So we could, we could, could, could set up the start and stop points, but uh, I forgot to turn off my watch, so that's what that dinging was. I remember to turn off all the rest of the noti notifications. Oh, Embird, thank you, Karina. I don't know why I forget about Embird. Um, there you go. All right, so let's place this one. So all I'm doing is using the uh, copy in layouts under create, create layouts and the mirror copy in different ways and I really like doing this. Um, it's really fun to experiment with different, you know, different ways of copying. You could take a design and do the copy reflect or the circle layout, and you can make like an amazing design just from that. It's really cool. And I really find it enjoyable uh, to play around. It's one of my favorite things to do in Hatch or any other software for that matter, um, just because it's fun and you could just be so creative and just kind of surprise yourself with the things that you can come up with. And to me, that's just awesome for um, any, you know, embroidery design. So all I'm doing now is just copying the piece and with control C and you have it copied and then I'm just but I don't make it straight and I okay okay Hatch just a little too enthusiastic there geez I uh, I don't make it straight and I end up with inconsistencies so there we go that's awesome now we want to make this big so right now it is four by seven and I think it needs to be a little bit bigger for a mug rug. So any questions so far? I whipped through that pretty quickly but there's also already a video on it so we don't need to worry about it. So if there's any questions I'm gonna take a little drink. Take a little drink. That's much better. It's dry in here. Okay, well, let's uh, put up a hoop then. What do we have? Not that hoop. Uh, oh, don't I have? Yeah, right here. I was going to say. I think I want like uh, eight by eight. So it doesn't matter the brand or anything. It's just the size. And I always click manual centering. I must remember to change my template in uh, Hatch so it goes manual. The auto centering uh, drives me nuts. So okay, that's probably a good size. We'll be able to turn this when we're we're ready to to stitch. Losing losing me again. Lost you again. Maybe you get lost because Dawn is not by your side. Ah, uh, might be your internet. Sometimes if the internet goes down even a little bit you lose your stuff. So, and it also could be YouTube. There could be a lot of things, but I have a green light. I have it as steady. So that's, that's what I'm gonna guess. It could be anything. All right. So I made this a little bit, bit bigger just because I can. And now I would like to branch it because right now it's a horrible mess of jump stitches. 
all over the place. See that? That's no. That's no. No. <laughs> no. We don't want those jump stitches. So for something like this, we want to go to edit object finish here. Am I going to remember that? Uh, no. Left in, right out, because I want everything to connect. Now we only have one piece. What is the name of the program? It is Hatch Embroidery Software. It's at the top, uh, but you guys can't see it. So Hatch Embroidery Software. Um, and and I, I just like it. Uh, I like E4 better. I use E4 for business every day. And Hatch is uh, pretty powerful, but I also have a whole string of other embroidery software. So it's, um, it's awesome. It's awesome. I like having a selection. If I was rich, I would have them all. So there you go. Hi from Atlanta. Love the videos. You helped convince me to purchase Hatch. Well, congratulations, Pete, on purchasing Hatch. It's a brilliant program. There's a lot of good software out there, but for me, in my opinion, um, with 15 years experience, I think I would have been really happy to start my business with Hatch. I did start it with Embird, um, but I think Hatch, I would have been a lot faster and a lot easier. Embird's a fantastic program, but it takes so long to figure it out. Oh, it just drives me nuts. So yeah, I like Hatch. So I have selected this. This is one of my favorite moves to do is I'm going to right click and when you do that, you get a second copy of it. I'm a little bit off there, but eh, that's okay. And I'm going to break it apart so it's not all together like that. Um, I'm going to see a lot of people were asking about welding. If you can weld stuff together. I'm not sure if you can do it or if you should do it with the... Um, with a running stitch. Now what I did do is apply closest closest join and I think we can let's try some sequencing things to make it a little bit better and we'll just check right here. Nope still looks like crap. Ah uh, well that's okay. Stitch edit. No. I was just trying to make it easier. So, okay, we've got this puzzle piece nice and large. Now, if you're just going to make one mug rug, why don't I have it at my desk? I have no idea, but okay, if you're going to make one mug rug like I did, you could do the shape anything you want. So it's, um, <clears throat> okay, so if you want to make one, that's fine. If you want to make um, like a set, that's what Karina and I are working on, then you can change the one that we're making. So that's why I copied this one over. What I should have done just to make this easier to show, select and select and properly group it. Now I'm going to mirror it and put it back down in place. So this is the centerpiece. This is what I'm talking about for the centerpiece. So our idea was, wait a minute, group, wait a minute, flip. There we go. Just so I don't forget what I'm doing. There we go. So this is the centerpiece. So the idea is that all the, you know, put this in the center. There's, you know, it's not going to be great for, um, you know, as a mug rug because it's all open and make this one a smidge smaller. And so they fit in, you know, we could work on that. I just kind of hacked that out, but make the shape so it fits together and fits in. And that's what we thought. If you do one, two, three, four around, that could be a placemat. And then you can take it apart and use it as mug rugs. And uh, I think it's brilliant. That's all I'm saying. I think it's brilliant and so much fun. So much fun. Um, really fun and brilliant. Just brilliant. So we're going to call this one the Inception Puzzle Piece Mug Rug. So what we're going to do 
is we're gonna fill this one. So to make it easier, I am gonna go to digitize. Everyone following along, am I going to it inside? I know I could shrink it, but after all, this is a digitizing lesson, right? So I might as well do digitizing because it's good practice for everyone. Whoops. Oh, I know what my, comp I keep forgetting to do that. Every single time on these puzzle pieces, I do the corners wrong. So, uh, hello. Oh, Jackie, very clever. Listening while I'm babysitting. Well, you rock on. That's awesome. That's, that, that's the way to do it. So right clicks, left clicks, just go around and go on the inside of everything because we're gonna play around whoops I don't like that one backspace if you don't like it we are gonna play around with a few things and I just want you know a normal one so I can change the inside I can do different things and work on the sides of it so there we go and we're gonna ugh, I missed a corner but then I did it wrong. It's this one. Wow. Every time. Oh, well, just accept it. I'm going to do the pieces wrong. <laughs> Every time. Every time. So once I'm done this, I will look for... Oh, that's terrible. I will look for questions and see how we are doing there and there Ooh, I am done 16 people watching you guys rock that's cool uh so okay any questions any problems so far do I need to slow down am I good am I good all right hopefully I'm good so now that we have this one stitched out in a terrible color so let's change it into another terrible color because we're going to do a few things with it we want it to be a uh, satin stitch okay it's not fitting into what you guys are thinking yet but let's go to satin stitch and i want to make sure i would tidy this up a little bit but I want to make sure that it fits in. So we sat and stitched both of them. So I'm just telling you guys how to do it, just a quick way how to do it. Um, obviously, you see this has to be changed a little bit, um, but you get the idea, right? And you just, whatever size that you're making it, there's no regulation for size or anything like that. Um, just make it fit just make it fit it may take a little bit of trial and error but I would say leaving a space in between and I moved that control Z to fix it leaving a space in between this top part and this would be how you want to do it um, it won't go anywhere and it'll be easy if you can get it precise then that's absolutely fantastic um, the other idea we thought of, because Karina said she's just going to stitch out um, puzzle pieces <laughs> forever because it'll just fit right in. You make a table runner, you do that kind of stuff. Well, we thought, how about making, designing, you know, end pieces so you can make even even just the centerpiece like this, you could just make end pieces and that would you know fit in and you could square it off so let's figure out how to do that so i'm going to change the color of this guy it's still something i don't know how well you guys can see that red maybe uh kind of sucks oh that's a terrible color too i don't have enough colors up here yellow doesn't show up orange no all right well red it is that's fine so this is what i'm thinking okay that fits on perfectly we want to bring it in just a little bit and see and make adjustments so I'm happy with this part I think that is probably a big enough space but you see when you make stuff small like this it's not making the whole thing small perfectly you can see we're gonna have issues around here this part isn't gonna work so you can't just simply make something small and go wow okay that'll fit it it doesn't 
it doesn't. So you have to take the time to do it a little bit differently. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to get it just, just about how I want it. And I think I want it down a little bit here, just a little bit, but then it's too thin. And then I'm going to go into reshape and I'm just going to very carefully move the nodes so that they are, you know, looking good. Keep the same angle. So remember it's in two parts, right? And start and stop. So it'll basically stitch out. You don't have to worry about it. It will stitch out as one piece. So try to keep the shape nice and try to keep it even. So I'm going to pull this one out a little bit. See, that looks pretty good up to about here looking pretty good. This is, uh, you know, easy to do. This is making an embroidery pattern out of one piece. That's what we started off with at the beginning of this video was one piece. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to go back to select and I'm going to bring this down and just kind of check. Yep. We're still good. I'm checking the ends here because it's important that everything fits. Now, our next problem is because we made this shorter. I mean, we don't want the piece to end up like that. So let's go back into our reshape and we are going to just very carefully pull it out because we want them to end in the same spot. And now we have got that and let's take a look. I think that's okay. Guidelines are so helpful. Yeah, it just looked a bit off and there's maybe a bit of too much space there, but really it's, um, maybe it's uh, a little bit much, but that's okay. What does Karina say? I changed the convex curves, made them bigger so the curve fit in. Well, yeah, you can do that too. Yeah, more than one way on on this uh to do this of course that's the thing with embroidery you know i show you guys one way but if you come up with something different or someone else did and it still works yeah that's a great way i i always say that that is a fantastic way whatever works for you that you're using you know your software and you're comfortable and you're happy that's what's important that's what's important so let's keep rocking on. Let's go to our digitize open shape. And we kind of, you know, we can do what we want. I'm going to try. This is why also, let me tell you why I keep the crosshairs um, instead of just a pointer. The crosshairs help you line up stuff. Do you see how it's going there? Like if I wanted to put it in the middle, the crosshairs help you do that. And that is why I leave them on because it's helpful in that regard. Um, I think we have to make them straight. So that's another thing you can see right here that I am making it straight. So that is, uh, you have to get used to it a little bit, but that's how the best way to do it. See, now I was about to click to left click and I was off a little bit, just slightly. So we want the two lines to match, right? Boom. And then here, now it should be straight. So we're going to have to change that just a little bit. And then we got to make them meet. But do you guys think that'll work? If we do one, two, three, four of them, I think this probably has to go out in an angle though, be, to have, well, you know what? It actually depends on what shape you guys want. And this is where the fun comes in. All you have to do is group this, copy and paste, have a look at it. Let's go, let's move you guy over here. So select all the body parts and I need to change it there. Thank you. Oh, I don't know why I couldn't select that, but geez, Louise. I wanted to zoom in and fix this. We do require connection, please. Go back to reshape. See how easy it is to uh, play around though, guys? Like it, and it's fun. This is where the creativity happens. A lot of people say, oh, where do you get the, the, the clip art? And you know, how can I do this? You know what? We started off with this, a curvy line 
just one curvy line. You could curve it in a different way and make a whole different pattern, make all the motif stitches, so many things you guys can do. And it's easy, and this is fun. This is a spectacular way to spend your time, and it makes you feel really good because it's so darn creative. So let's group this guy and I just right clicked and dragged it over and I'm going to turn it around so we can see. Now, of course, we're not stitching. I always click too many times too, apparently. It's very clicky today. Um, apparently, oh, really? <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Yeah, that was fun. There we go. How about I right click and drag? Yeah, haha. <laughs> I, I kind of missed that one. That was close. Three, four, five, six. And this is what it's looking like. You know what? For those around, that might be okay. Or we can, um, I would put the grid on for you guys working with this. I don't put the grid on while I'm doing videos because it makes it very confusing, you know, how well you guys can see. But this would really look cool. Or you can put the grid on so you have lines and just simply click on this one. Uh, you have to ungroup it and click on this part and go to reshape. And we want to move that up. We want to do it something like this. Um, add a few points and then that could go like that. And we want to cut that right in half. So that would be cool too. It's just, you know, if you had the if you had the grid up, you can make it more precise and and do this part the same so they connect. Make sure you leave room for the satin stitches. Um so that would be kind of and you have to do it on this side. So that would kind of be cool shapes too or you can leave it like this. I mean, or you can do an applique around in this part that we had. Let's take this back 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 there we go um or you could just leave it like this because i think this if it's big enough would make a pretty darn cool um mug rug in and of itself so this puzzle idea has been so much fun so now all you have to do to make the puzzle mug rug is you just go through the steps. Now there's a few different ways you can do it, but the idea is that we want batting and fabric and on the back we want fabric. So hoop your um, wash away stabilizer. I don't know why, brain mess up there. I was just like, loo, loo, loo. Um, hoop your wash away stabilizer and then we wanted to stitch down a uh, placement line which is this so that's one and then lay down your batting and lay down your fabric and we want to stitch that down so then there's two of them so let's just pull that out put a color change in now center it back up. It could be a tiny bit smaller. That works. So once that's down, then you want to do whatever stitching it that you want in here. And what we thought of is that you could use the puzzle motif. So it's a puzzle shape with a puzzle motif, but you can decide whatever you want for that. Um, you can do whatever you want. I think it would look really cool. So that would stitch out next. And then, so we just pretend that there's something in there. And then you want to put the backing fabric down on the back behind the hoop, the pretty side down. And you need to do this one more time to stitch it all together. Then you take it off the machine, you trim it, and then we're going to do the satin stitch lines and we're done. So it's easy to do mug rugs out of anything if you remember those steps and what you have to digitize. It is really cool too if you remember um, to 
change the start and stop points for everything. Like start, I started on the first one I when I branched it. I started here and I ended here because it's really, if you don't pay attention to that, it's going to stitch this one out. You're going to put your fabric and everything over it and the machine's going to move here and stitch here. Okay, it's not a jump stitch, but it is machine movement. So we try to be as efficient as we can and that's one way of doing it and also your motif it would be cool if it started from there or whatever place that you pick that'll work and the satin stitches and that'll cover up all the tie-ins and tie-offs that you have in the corner so that's the most efficient way of doing it now if you have a smaller hoop let me pull up a hoop where is it oh there it is um that's like uh, I think it's the eight by eight hoop, but if you have a lot smaller hoop and obviously this does not fit a way to get more room, click again and turn it this way. And then you may be able to get more space, uh, bigger, whoops, click, be able to get it bigger because it fits in a little bit better. And even if you have a four by four hoop, you can make it as big as possible. That fits fantastic. And it's uh, almost to the original size that we had that didn't fit. So that is a super handy trick when you're digitizing to, yeah, see, it's pretty close. And when you put this one here, it's, it's like way off. You can't do it. So that's a wonderful trick. Um, Look, it's almost the same. How cool is that? I think that's fun. All right, there we go. So that's how you get it bigger. Are there any questions? Do you guys have any questions? And can I do something funny? <laughs> I have just funny stuff. Let me find something funny to do. Particles, I think. I can make it rain. No, I'm not going to do this scene because of my green screen will show. Oh, we can put an emoticon. Panic. What can we put? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Bro fist. Why not? Bam. That's what I should do every time I hit enter. I should put up a bam because it's cool. <laughs> so are there any questions? Seems like we lost some people, but... Are you doing the stitch out live? Uh, I can, um, I can on one. I actually recorded the one that I did so I could, I should have, you know what? I should have pulled it off the camcorder, the camera and I could play it, but uh, no, I'm not equipped to do that because I have my green screen going on and everything I'd have to reset up. But you know what? We could do a sew along on Monday and we could stitch it out together in each, um, each part and talk about it and different things that we can do and colors. So let me know, do you guys wanna do that on Monday or Tuesday or sometime this week? Probably in the evening for me, if I'm not too tired, I still get kind of sick some days, um, in the evening, uh, and we're EST here. So I'm thinking like 6 PM EST. Let me know if that would work for you guys and we could set it up on a day. Karina says, yep. I knew you guys would want to be there. I knew it. I knew it. So do you guys have any questions? This is another thing I want to do is uh, Q&A time. So, you know, we'll plan it and I can do a live Q&A and you can ask me digitizing questions and get an immediate answer. So I'd like to start doing that. Hopefully people will be interested in it and, uh, you know, have a lot of questions because it'd be really cool if you had a question about, you know, turning something or, or whatever that I could show you immediately how to do it. So we are always here when you are. Yes, you are Karina, which is awesome. 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 We want to go to visit Karina and her husband. Um, 
one day, maybe in a couple of years, maybe if we can get this YouTube channel to go nuts that I could come and visit you guys. Hatch is a great program. I'm an illustrator and Photoshop geek and I can see a lot of simil similarity. Yet there is uh, quite a bit of similarity. The only thing is it's stitches, not graphics and layers matter. A lot of people send me emails and they say, I'm a graphic artist and I wanna start an embroidery. And the first thing I tell them is your graphic knowledge uh, isn't gonna help you with embroidery and buy a machine so you can test them out. And believe it or not, probably about 10 people have said that they weren't gonna buy a machine. I'm like, well, you won't get anyone to buy your embroidery designs. Their idea is just, you know, convert it into stitches. And it's, no, you, you have to know, um, you have to know stuff. I would love to learn some more about density. Okay, tell me why, Karina. Because I don't mess with density too much. The default set, unless I'm doing something special, and we can talk about that. Um, but the standard density settings is going to work for most of your things. Do you know where I can make a suggestion for Hatch digitizing for a, f for a new feature? Yeah, go on to um, wilcom.com slash hatch and you can send them a message. They do keep track of suggestions. And you know what, on Hatch 2 that just came out, well, came out a while ago, they actually implemented some of the suggestions that people had. The red work, I think, was one of them. There's a couple of extra things that we got. Um, so cool because I don't know anything. Of, okay. Well, good answer. Yeah, we can do, um, maybe we'll do a density class, uh, in live and we can talk about density and different things that matters. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, but in hatch, you don't have a density, you know, x-ray and this and that, whatever. Um, you don't really need it. So we can talk about that as well. Um, good question, Karina. Thank you. So density, I'm going to have to put up a poll in the OML Embroidery University Facebook group to see what people want first, and then we'll set up some times for live. I like lives as long as my house is quiet. Sometimes it gets a bit unnerving because I have dogs walking around and, and whatever, but I like uh, lives cause I don't have to edit. <laughs> um, yeah. I um I don't have to edit, so it saves me hours and hours of work. And believe it or not, sometimes uploading to YouTube sucks. We have really good internet, but sometimes it takes like a 10 minute video, two hours to upload. And that's incredible. So lives, I mean, a little bit of setup that I was doing anyways, we don't mind the dogs. It just makes me nervous. May I ask something about building motifs and motif stitches. Yeah. What software, Tanika? Tanika. Yeah. I don't know if that's how you say it. My apologies if I didn't say it right. Um, motifs are, when I discovered that we, we can't really use motifs for the business. So after I had the heart attack and was doing stuff that I actually wanted to do, um, I started getting into motifs and they just simply make me happy. Like a picture of a dash hound with a dash hound motif or bone motif. And oh, I just love it. Uh, yep. Yeah, 5.5. I think that is almost exactly the same as hatch. So anything we're doing in hatch, um, is the same as the MBX. Um, as far as I know, the 4.5 is not. So five and above is almost exactly hatch. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. So yeah, question. So we're going to do Q and A, we're going to do a digitized live and, uh, reading your comments. I just thought that would be super fun to do. Um, hi from Houston like to know more about density too. Okay. Thanks, Catherine. That's good to know. This is another reason for, you know, you guys commenting and stuff is that I know what you want 
my goal is to do videos that you guys love and sometimes I can't figure it out and it uh, it drives me nuts because I do something and it only gets 200 views I mean that's fine but I it, it's just hard so I want to do stuff so feel free to suggest like density that's a fantastic video. Um, I'm going to make a video hopefully this week about um, thread shredding and different things that can cause it and how you fix it as well. You missed Dawn. Oh, poo. <laughs> All right. Next time I'll make sure Dawn's here. Jeez. And the dogs, you know what? I just can't help it. It's, um, I don't have like a studio anymore. We changed everything around. So I am in a big open room, five steps from the living room and the dogs come in and go and I, it's not quite as professional that I want, but if I waited till the dogs laid down, I'd never make any videos. So I just kind of do it. Definitely have to watch this one again. Lots of info, missed a lot, trying to listen whether well, watching a movie. Yep, it'll be up. YouTube takes just a little while to process it and then you can watch it and uh, enjoy it and go through. We just kind of playing around with the puzzle shapes and ideas and it was kind of fun. And uh, okay, so next week coming up, we will be stitching out the mug rug. I do have the video. I might just put it up or I might do it again and uh, speak to you guys about it or do it live. Remains to be seen. I have a gorgeous Anita Good Design quilt that I stitched to show you guys. I want to do a vlog. I want to do uh, reading your comments and um, I will schedule in the OML Embroidery University Facebook group or just OML Embroidery on the page uh, a Q&A so I can make myself available for, you know, half an hour or an hour for you guys to just simply ask questions and we can work through the questions that are holding you guys back from, you know, doing what you want and being happy about it. So, um, think of your questions and, uh, we'll, we'll do that. I, I, I will have the coffee ready until then. Yes. Yes. Stream resumed. Uh, you might get a glitch there. That's awesome. All right. I'm going to say thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys like this live. I hope you guys will join me for more lives and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.